Hello, this is Elliot Harmon from TechSoup. About a week and a half ago, I hosted a session at the Nonprofit Technology Conference called The Future of the Map. As part of that session, we had live demos of various GIS and mapping tools, including a quick demo that I did of the Google Maps API. I didn't quite get to everything that I wanted to show during that demo, uh, both because of time constraints and because of some of the problems we were having with internet connectivity. So I just thought I would make a quick video, both for people who were at the session and wanted to see this in a little bit more depth and for people who didn't get to make it to the session. Uh, this is definitely not going to be a thorough uh, course in, in Google Maps, but I will give you some resources of where you can look for more information. Oh, uh, before we get started, I would recommend that you change your settings in your YouTube player to 720p. Um, and depending on your internet speed, you might need to pause the video and give it a little time to load. Uh, otherwise, if you run it in a lower resolution, a lot of what I'm going to show here will just kind of be blurry. So anyway, uh, here is the uh, survey, the audience survey that we started the session with. We encouraged everybody in the audience to fill out this survey. It has these fields. Describe yourself, your level of expertise with GIS and mapping tools. And finally, this question, where are you based? Now, that's a pretty vague question. The answer to that could be a city, it could be a name of an organization or company, it could be a country, it could be an address, it could be a zip code, it could be a lot of different things. If you were actually seeking out this data for the purposes of doing something useful with it, this would not be a very good question to ask. But I did this on purpose to make a point that it may well be that the data in your donor database uh, isn't perfectly consistently formatted either. So I kind of wanted to start with some intentionally messy data to show that there are still very easy ways that you can still get worthwhile information out of that data, even if the formatting of it is, isn't as clean as you would like it to be. Uh, so here's what we got from the survey. Um, and as you can see here, here are the where you, you are based responses. And as you can see, there are a lot of different ways that people took that question. Um, the easiest way to get a map out of this data is just to highlight this column and the what are you hoping to learn today column. I'll show you in a second what we're going to do with that. And go insert, gadget, uh, move to the maps list, and add to spreadsheet. This range that shows the cells that will be covered. I won't bother giving it a title. Last column as tooltips. I'll show you that in a second. And we'll make it a normal map just so it loads a little more quickly. And here's the map that we end up with. I'll actually move this onto its own sheet just so we can see it a little bit more clearly. And here's the dots that it's assigned to each respondent. And if I click on these, that's where I see the tooltip, uh, that last column that I highlighted, the what are you hoping to learn today column. Now, how did Google know where to place these dots, even though it didn't have a specific latitude and longitude? It's actually the same way that Google Dot, excuse me, Google Maps knows where to put the marker when you just enter, say, Traverse City, Michigan, or when you just enter Brannon Street, San Francisco, California. It essentially makes a guess. Now, if you want to see what that looks like on the API level, I'll, I'll show this to you here. We'll just copy these over into the Google Geodata hack spreadsheet, uh, which there's a link to this in the blog post. And I've pasted this info in, and here's literally what comes back from the Google Maps API. You have your latitude and longitude there, and then you have this uh, accuracy ranking uh, that just gives you the level of uh, specificity of, of the string that's been entered. So for example, DC gets a two because it's Google Maps' best guess that that's Washington, DC, uh, but, but New York gets a four. And here, to, to show another example of that, here's Brannon Street, San Francisco. That gets a six from Google Maps, but if I were to enter 435, Brannon Street, San Francisco, uh, that would get an eight. And if I were to enter TechSoup, that's TechSoup's address, I would get a nine. This may or may not be useful to you, depending on what you're doing with this data. It might be useful for you to explore pulling out those rankings. Uh, but anyway, going back to our map over here, that's, that's kind of useful. 
uh, to look at this map and see where the respondents actually are. But there's not a whole lot more that we can do with this in terms of analysis from within Google Docs. To get a kind of slightly more impressive way of looking at this data, we're actually going to move over to Google Fusion Tables. Now, Google Fusion Tables is a relatively new uh, tool. I, I think it's been around for just over a year. Um, and, and it's basically a web-based database. Um, and Google Fusion Tables, it can pull in data from a lot of different sources, uh, including CSV, KML, uh, and from Google Docs spreadsheets directly. Unfortunately, there's sort of this little quirk that Google Docs doesn't consider this document a spreadsheet. It considers this document a form, quote, end quote, even though forms have essentially the same functionality as spreadsheets. So there's just an extra step we need to take here of moving this data into a, a spreadsheet. Okay, now we've pasted in that data, and now we're ready to pull this into the database. Import table. And here again, you'll see the choices of where you can get this info from. But we're going to pull it from Google Spreadsheets. Annoying extra step. And now we have the choice of which fields to use. I'm going to go ahead and leave off the timestamp field. But again, depending on what you're using this data for, it might be useful for you to use the timestamp. And now we have this database, which looks conspicuously like the spreadsheet looked, but there are some slightly more impressive things that we can do with it. But before we do anything, we need to tell Fusion Tables that this column, where are you based, is a location column. And in order to do that, we go edit, modify columns, location. Now, as you can see, now that it recognizes this as a location column, it's highlighted each item in that column. What that means is that that uh, data has not been geocoded yet. So, for example, if I click on the globe icon by New York, it'll give me its best guess for where New York is. And if I had a more specific address or something, I could move the marker there. In this particular case, I'll just click and confirm that location. Uh, same with Washington, D.C. Uh, that's where it places the marker and we're going to use that location. Now fortunately we don't need to go through and geocode each one of those manually. Instead we can just go into visualize map and it will automatically code each of those and this is what we see. Basically the same map that we were looking at when we were doing this in in uh, Google Docs. Uh, you click on any of these and you can get the full record there. But we still haven't done anything in terms of customization of the map. Now, there is a lot that you can do here in, cu in terms of customization. I'm just going to just barely scratch the surface by showing you this. Earlier today, I made this symbols table, which just takes each of these roles that were in the survey, volunteer, other IT staff, accidental techie, consultant, and assigns a symbol to them. These are just different color markers, and there's these and dozens of other symbols available within the Google Maps framework itself. And now I'm going to go back to this table, and I'm going to merge it with the symbols table. And now we've identified describe yourself in both tables as the uh, column that we're going to sync up within the tables. And we have to give that new table a name. Now we will merge them. All right, and now as you can see, it's taken each of these characteristics over here, accidental techie, consultant, etc., and assigned it to its corresponding symbol. Now, if we go into map from here, what we're actually going to see is the same map we were looking at a second ago. Uh, and the reason for that is because we haven't actually told it what to do with that symbols column. In order to do that, we need to configure styles, map marker icons, and then you tell it to use that symbols column. Now we save that. And this is what we have. 
And now suddenly with very, very little work, we have this color coded map. And for example, we can say, oh, there's two uh, yellow people in, in the Northeast. What are they? Those are others. So maybe we need an others user group in the Northeast. You get the idea. And this can be a lot of different things. This could be, for example, your donor database. And this could be how recently people have donated. So you can see how your fundraising is working in different areas. Uh, and, or, or, or this could be some kind of advocacy tool. Um, oh, and the other thing that's neat about this is that this merged table that we are looking at now is automatically updated when the tables that, you're, that you've merged into it are updated. So for example, if I wanted to have a map like this embedded on my website, whenever I added more records to it, this map would be updated automatically. Now, once again, I've really only just barely scratched the surface in terms of what's possible uh, with both Google Fusion tables and with the Google Maps API. Um, in the blog post, there are some links for more information. If you have any questions, you can feel free to contact me. I'm Elliot with two L's and one T at techsoup.org. If I can't help you, I will try my hardest to get you in touch with somebody who can help you. Uh, thanks a lot for your time.